This is graduation season. And Jody and I, a uh, couple weeks ago already, uh, we're in Indiana celebrating our youngest, Alana's graduation from Indiana University. Next week, next Friday, our middle daughter, Michelle, will graduate from the school formerly known as Ryerson University, Toronto Metropolitan University, uh, with a bachelor's degree in uh, radio and television arts. Uh, and this Wednesday, Chat, Tannenbaum Chat High School will celebrate its graduation here at Betsedek. And I was invited to give a blessing to the graduating class. And I also, if you, if looking on my Facebook feed, um, it seems all my friends' kids are graduating and even some of my friends' grandkids, um, the cutest pictures are of the JK and SK um, in the caps and gowns, you know, in kindergarten already. It's graduation season. Uh, and so I looked up on the internet, uh, what are some of the more popular graduation wishes to give your high school or college grad this year. Uh, here, are, there are 75 of them that came up on this particular list. I'm only sharing a few. Uh, they say nothing is impossible. You're the proof. Happy graduation. <laughs> who knew you'd be successful? Me, that's who. I like that one. The only way to climb a mountain is one step at a time. Congratulations on reaching the summit. Uh, or may the sweet reward of success guide you well into the future. You make us so proud just by being you every single day. We can't wait to see what comes next. The next step in the journey is only a tassel away. And the next one, of course, is tassel turned, check. Happy graduation. Uh, a couple funny ones. Do your homework, says no one after today. Congrats. Celebrate the moment. Things only get harder from here. And here's my favorite one that I might say to my own kids as Michelle graduates and plans to move to Los Angeles in the fall. Congratulations on your graduation. You're, we're turning your room into a gym. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no? <laughs> um, uh, of course, what is the inspiration that this morning's Torah reading might give us when we think about graduations and the important milestone and transition that they represent from one stage of a young person's life to the next. Uh, I pointed uh, everyone's attention to those inverted nuns in the Torah reading that take these two verses that become the basic, the basics of the Torah reading. At, when we take the Torah out, we say, Vayihibin so Haron, Vayomer Moshe. We say that when the Torah would be would travel, Moses would say, Kuma Adonai v'yafutsu vecha, get up God and disperse your enemies, v'yanusu misanecha mipanecha, and may all, the, all your fo foes flee before you. And we just sang, as we return the Torah to the ark, uh, yomar, and when the Torah would be at rest, Moses would say, Shuva Adonai, return, O Lord. Revivot alfei Yisrael, you who are Israel's myriads of thousands. Within these two verses, I think we can find some profound messages for those that are graduating at this moment. Number one, Vayihi ben Soa, embrace the journey. This is a time of transition, uncertainty, and discerning. Every step is an opportunity for growth. Number two, as Moses did, 
Seek guidance from the divine, prayer, meditation, or introspection. And if you have difficulty connecting with the divine, if God is still a theology or a challenge for you, seek guidance from others. Learn from those who have experience and wisdom. Number three, kuma adonai v'yafutsu aivecha. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, get up, God, and disperse your enemies. We can learn from this the importance of learning to face your fears, of overcoming obstacles. We can say to our graduates, remember, you're part of a great people with a great tradition that has not only survived but thrived in overcoming the greatest challenges that humanity has ever faced. That's your tradition. You don't go on this journey alone. We're with you, behind you, every step of the way. Uvno choyomar. And when the Torah would find rest, says this verse. It's a reminder to our graduates and perhaps for all of us as well, the importance of finding rest, of renewal, to take time to recharge and to reflect. Remember Shabbat, the day of rest, for exactly that purpose. And number five, Shuvah Adonai Rivavot Alfei Yisrael, this notion of when the Torah would rest, God would bring it back to the myriads of Israel is a lesson to our graduates. Remember to stay connected, to stay connected. Moses asked, for God to return, for God to return to the families of Israel. When our graduates go out onto this journey, we have to help them to remember to stay connected, not only to us as their parents and their grandparents and their families, not only to their synagogue of their birth and development, but even more importantly, no matter where they are in the world, to the Jewish people, to Torah, to nurture the relationships with friends, family, mentors, Torah and God that matter. Five profound messages for graduates from two verses of Torah. These two verses of Torah are considered to be so important that the Talmud says they are Sefer Chashuv Bifnei Atzmohu, that they are a book of the Torah in and of themselves. In other words, right, what the Talmud is saying is that there's not really five books of Moses, there are seven books of Moses. Bereshit, Genesis, Shemot, Exodus, Vayikra, Leviticus, the first part of Bamidbar, up into these verses, these two verses, Vayihibin Soharon, the second part of Bamidbar, after these verses, and then Deuteronomy. That's how important these verses are for the Talmud. They become Sefer Chashuv Bifnei Atzmohu, a book in and of themselves. 85 letters. Now, what makes these verses and these letters so important that the Talmud would treat them as a sefer ba'atzmohu, as a book in and of themselves. The Talmud answers, mekupelet kol ha'historia shalanu. And that I think, and with this I think is the final message I want to share as I'm thinking about graduation today. Mekupelet kol ha'historia shalanu means that within these two verses is contained all of Jewish history. All of Jewish history in two verses, in 85 letters. Vayahib and Haron, the Torah would travel. For thousands of years, we have been a wandering people in exile. And our history during those wanderings, during that exile from our homeland, has made us vulnerable. It's a reminder that what makes us strong, no matter where we find ourselves in the world, both physically and spiritually, is that without roots, there are dangers. 
And so the reminder is to remember to cultivate your roots, to engage in a Jewish community, to engage in Torah no matter where you find yourself. And the second part of the verse, Uvnucho Yomar, is Bisha'ab Miragua, that at a time of rest, there can also be dangers. If we have too much comfort, we risk becoming complacent. We might think that we no longer need God. In North America, one of the things that we struggle with is an estrangement from God. We don't talk about God enough. We, we tend to ignore the theological questions that matter most in our lives. And for many of us, our image and understanding of God is something that ends when we're bar bat mitzvah, unless we come back 50 years later. It ends when we're bar, bar bat mitzvah, and as a result, our image of God is ultimately a pediatric image and doesn't speak to the real realities and relevancies of the challenges that we face in our lives, for which our Jewish tradition and a robust, vibrant theology of God can help us overcome. Israel today may be suffering from the opposite issue of complacency, overconfidence in the righteousness of, of a traditional, orthodox, sometimes extreme Judaism that is so narrow in its focus, it too ceases to be relevant to the challenges that we face. The inverted nuns and the Torah service bring, into our, bring Torah back into our midst and back to the ark. On our journey in life, these verses and this service that we recite several times a week redirect us towards the teachings of Torah. Samson Raphael Hirsch, the great neo-Orthodox rabbi of the 18th century in Germany wrote about these verses and Torah, so that it was with the moves of the ark the progress of God's Torah that Moses saw the moves of God on earth. Where Torah finds no home, there is no home for the presence of God. And where a home is prepared for Torah, there is a home made ready for the presence of God on earth. And so I think the charge of Vayihim and Toharon, the charge of Pahalotcha, to those that may be graduating at this time of year, is that wherever you go, be sure to make for yourself a home, a place for Torah. If you do that, you'll make for yourself as well a home for God, and you'll learn to live a life of meaning and purpose. Mazaltov for all those who will be celebrating a graduation this year.